Crazy weekend in college football. We had some upsets and some great games, especially in the Big 12. And then one in the Pac-12 we got to talk about. Me and my boy Coop discussed that. All that coming up here in about 10 seconds. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, talking OU football, college football, and sports in general. Thanks for checking us out here on the channel. Please hit the like and subscribe button while you're here. It helps us out as a small content creator to continue to grow. We are on the road to 2,500 subs. I love to have you all here on the journey while you're watching this as well. Share, because sharing is caring. And with that, me and my man's Coop are going to talk about a few games from this past weekend now that I'm back in town so that uh, we can get your thoughts. Hop in the comments and let us know what you thought about the games from USC and Utah, Oklahoma State, TCU. We want to know how you felt. Iowa State versus Texas. Some good games that went down. Let us know your thoughts. So there's one game that really jumped on everybody's, I guess you could say, schedule that are uh, college football fans and – um uh, kind of near and dear to our heart as well, our former coaches coaching out there. It's going to be, you know, USC losing to Utah 43 to 42 in a game that was taken over by Utah with a game winning two point conversion because they wanted to take the lead and actually win this thing. They didn't want it. They didn't want it to, to linger mm. and, USC could not close and seal the deal. And you had texted me this, and I thought it was funny. The reason why I wanted to bring this up is someone tweeted out this. The quote from our guy Lincoln Riley in the press conference is, we're close. The thing that he says every time they lose. Every time. We've seen it every time. And so now USC fans, and I actually saw – some other um, outside of the on the, the uh, USC twenty four seven on like I said the Facebook account where everybody's wanting to fire Grinch now because all of a sudden <laughs> their defense sucks because before their defense was great and they're like yeah, so oh, yeah Oklahoma didn't have players and now everyone's starting to see that that defense is going to start deteriorating when you start playing really good teams so Coop man when, when when did you when you looked at this did you check out the game what did you think about the way USC played in this one. Uh, we've seen this film before, Jay. We've seen it. <laughs> we've seen it for three years. Um, so first and foremost, yeah, Caleb Williams. We all knew what he was, right? He is who we thought he, he was. A little shout out to Denny Green. Um, but same move with Lincoln Riley. What did Lincoln Riley usually when we lose big games? He abandons the run. Travis Dye is running out there, averaging you know seven yards a carry, and he is moving the ball at a 50 yard run in for for Caleb and he's averaging well I mean close to 10 yards of carry so they get up and here's where it is is they get up by 28 14 right at the end of the first half and what happens oh just a little 45 second 70 yard touchdown run right down the field for Utah to make it a one score game and I won't I won't even make it rhetorical Utah gets the ball coming out of half what do they do they run right down the field and they tie the game. And so right then and there, you're starting to see it with a lot of USC fans saying, you know, the Oklahoma fans warned us. They told us this was happening. We made fun of them. We were calling them, you know, uh, trolls because we, we stole their coach. But we handed them, we're like, just FYI, if this starts happening, here's how we've felt for the past three years. But it is struggling with mediocre teams. It is uh, the inability of closing on good teams. And um, again, Cam Rising. Cam Rising was a guy who had committed to OU and backed off that commitment. And it was more problem for an Alex Grinch defense with a running quarterback. And I'll say this, Cam Rising is not a running quarterback. Also, where have we seen traditionally a lot of struggles for, uh, over, uh, you know, for an OU defense right over the middle? That tight end, Kincaid, 16 receptions, 234 yards. Out of the slot, split out, right over the middle, just over and over and over again. There are a lot of college football teams that their tight ends don't have 16 receptions this year so far. Right. So. I think what's cracked me up is one of these comments on this uh, 24-7 Facebook page was that they heard that they cut out conditioning to make more time for NIL appointments. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, the I've defense has been bad seen. all year and it's getting worse and worse every week. Yeah, that's that's something that everybody warns you. Like I said, Lincoln Riley's a fantastic offensive mind coach. He goes out and kills and he'll scheme it. But you got to be careful throwing rocks in a glass house because that stuff's going to start crumbling down, and it is. They're yeah. starting to see everything that OU fans have warned. Hey, man, we were excited with them too for the years we had them, and then this stuff happens. And and, and I'll say this to before we wrap it up, it's <clears> – <throat> I would like OU fans to stop caring about what Lincoln Riley does now. Stop worrying about him. It's a good thing he left. Be happy mm-hmm. that he left. Stop acting like a scorned spouse. Be happy that <laughs> he's gone, specifically Wait. because then someone else can deal with the things that he will not address that bothered you so much while he was here. Let them deal with those problems. We're trying to figure out something new here, and you can see the difference. Yeah, we had that three-game stretch of of awfulness the defense start to turn up a little bit here against kansas and the even better part is the recruits that are on the pipeline are players we've never seen before so yeah with that leave lincoln riley alone stop caring about usc this will probably be the only time i talk about them in a derogatory manner because i don't really care about them like everybody else does because i think that the for most important thing for me is i like talking about big 12 football and now sec football yeah. coming into it we'll talk about college football itself and their wins and losses when it comes down. Cause like you said, Caleb Williams, a gamer. I like Caleb, like him a lot. And I understood why he would follow his coach. Travis die when they get 11 carries for 76 yards in this game. How do you have a running back like Travis and you only let him get 11 carries that yeah. to me is malpractice. Someone should get fired for not allowing that man to run it down their throat. So you got to play to win games and not play to not lose them so and, and i say this too jordan addison went down in that game and a lot of call him a lot of people are calling him a mercenary for hire and uh you know that's a blitnikoff winner he comes over um we'll see what happens now because now lincoln riley has what he brought over to usc and he doesn't have the blitnikoff winner if he's yep. out for any ex- ex- extended period of time we still don't know much about that but I do encourage OU fans. We we've seen it now that people have seen this script play out again for USC. Uh, that mystique of again the USC coming down and being the Pete Carroll USC that, that ain't happening, and a lot of people see it too. Exactly. So stop worrying about it. Let's move on from there. Jump to another game. I'm well, checking this out. Oklahoma State falls to TCU 43-40. to That was a pretty good thriller of a game. And it kind of goes into – it was one of two good thriller games outside uh, in the Big 12. TCU – let's remember this, guys. This is a funny thing. Everyone clown Oklahoma for the L's they took, right? This game was pretty close. It was a shootout between Oklahoma State and uh, TCU. Did you notice that the two teams that beat Oklahoma, or the three teams, technically, that beat Oklahoma, they're kicking everybody else's butt, too? Mm-hmm. Do we not realize and that TCU is an actually really good team? Sonny Dykes is kicking tail at TCU. And I got to say this is, in the past, I am 100% guilty of this. And so just hear that part first. Last year when we lost to Tulane, everybody was like, man, Tulane's going to be a salty team. That guy's going to do things. They're going to be great. And then we look up and they're three and seven. And we're like, uh, sorry. And so people didn't take that excuse this year. And I, uh, there was the bear on ESPN who does the picks on the, uh, the uh, college uh, Saturday morning college store. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he picked TCU to win. Uh, so there were some folks picking TCU to win. Uh, Texas is looking much better. And again, I, 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 I Kansas State still is playing good ball, but we all knew this. The uh, we would see something pretty soon out of Quentin Johnston. He was going to be a guy who was going to show up and say, "Guys, I'm an AP All American. Here, here, here's my game. Uh, he's big. He's fast. He's physical. He did well. Uh, Oklahoma State." Um, they don't have that bell cow uh, running back and you're starting to see it. And we've seen Spencer Sanders play since that second half, of that Notre Dame game, he has played much better than he's ever done in his career. And you see a lot of people who say like, you know, 
uh, you know, fool me once, shame on you, you know, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. And so you look at, um, you look at that and you got to think like eventually he was going to come back to the mean of what his career has been. And he was 16 of 36. I mean, that is under 50%. Uh, It's, it wasn't snowing. It wasn't raining or anything like that. Uh, They just didn't have much of a run game. He ran around quite a bit and he had, he had some scores, but when you got down to where they were having to throw the ball, TCU to throw the ball to come back, the the weakness of that Oklahoma State defense is their outside, their safeties. They're 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 just not as the secondary. Yeah, yeah. yeah and because I mean, in the secondary, and I mean, outside of the defensive line, that uh, you know, in the back five, counting some of the linebackers, uh, some of the guys that they lost last year had been on campus since like 1942. So they were doing. Uh, it's the same job year after year after year. Uh, but again, TCU is good. Uh, Max Duggan is, it, he is playing out of his mind right now. I still think that like, there's going to be one of those games where he is going to come back kind of like Spencer Sanders did. Uh, right. But when you got Quentin Johnson um, and I'll say this where we gave kudos to Utah and Whittingham for going for two to win the game, Oklahoma state had that same chance on the road to go for two at the end of that game and put that thing away and Gundy didn't do it. And so now we sit here with a one loss uh, Cowboys team. It's still an undefeated TCU team. Yeah. Hey, and, and that's the thing about it. You gotta look, you gotta look at the, the way TCU plays, man. Sonny Dykes offenses have always been pretty, pretty high octane as well. You know, it's yeah. kind of the thing. And then like I say, Garrett Riley's out there doing it like his brother does, making it super simple for them to run this, but TCU is six and zero. Oh. They're playing some great football right now. We talk about Tulane. We talk about Kansas State. Kansas State's lost one game this year. They lost to two mm-hmm. lanes. The only team they lost to, right? Tulane's the number 25 team in the country. Yep. They're 6-1. and one. Yep. So that Tulane loss does not look bad anymore on Kansas State nah. because they're winning in the freaking uh, – uh, in the AAC. So yeah. that's the thing that I try to tell people that, yeah, Oklahoma has lost some questionable games, but guess what? This they were losing good. to teams that are – actually good that actually are having good seasons teams that are building themselves up and looking mm-hmm. better now Tulane probably won't finish the year at you know with just one loss they'll probably lose a few more but that's a really good thing to see that team can start off that hot and yeah. play that good Kansas State's gonna be a problem getting out the Big 12 the way they're playing right now they're gonna cannibalize and kill it and beat each other up and that leads me to the next game Texas holding on against Iowa State I was watching that one at the same time or whatnot. And there was a lot of moments in that game. I thought Texas was going to lose. Like Iowa state has a very <clears throat> mediocre offense. Their offense is not good. Like Matt Campbell, That's the generous. Charles, he tried. they're not good. That's huh? generous. It's very That's generous. generous. <laughs> very generous on my part. Their offense is not very good. Decker is Deckers is not the guy. Uh, but he went out there and was cooking up on that. Uh, they were their defense is the best one in the Big Twelve. Let's put it like that. Iowa State has the Matt Campbell defense three three five. Their defense mm-hmm. is really good, and they held it on Texas. They made Texas work for all of it to win this game. To the point, like I said, I'm watching this. I'm like, man, there's a good chance Texas might lose this game. Like, wh- what's going on here? Did you get a chance to check out this one? And what do you think about Iowa yeah. State and Texas in this matchup? <clears throat> so I'll say this. Iowa State currently has scored 65 points this year. Oh, God. Kansas State is the number two, uh, the worst scoring offense in the league, and that's 88. They scored 41 on Oklahoma, so that means 47 points against everybody else. Mm -hmm. Um, Iowa State with Deckers. Deckers um, showed that same uh, Brock Purdy uh, capability of turning the ball over in frustrating manner in the worst times. And now again, you Deckers has Hutchison running right down the field to, to go up and put them up. Texas would have had time with the ball, but still they weren't showing much of that. So they had a chance. They throws over Hutchison misses that. And then he scrambles. I think it was on second down, but he scrambles everybody. Matt Campbell wanted a targeting call. Um, and again, with running, running quarterbacks, the moment that you become a runner, you are not afforded the same uh, uh, rules when it comes to targeting. So that wasn't a targeting call. I wanted it to be. I wanted to see Agreed. Texas lose. Because I don't love think, Texas losing around here. 
I don't think they deserve to win that game, though. Um, so we did see, uh, you know, a, a good game. Iowa State, though, is 0-4 in the conference. They have zero wins. And, uh, you know, if, if the three out of conference, they finally beat Iowa. Usually they lose to Iowa and they run the conference here uh, and, you know, cost traffic. But now they beat Iowa and now they can't win a game here. Um, I This is our next opponent. It's going to be another tough out. I think that Texas is, is is really really fortunate right now that they don't have another loss on their uh, on their record. I agree. I this this game should have been Texas losing if if Iowa State didn't just give it right back to them. And the fun part is it's going to be this weekend, which we got to probably do a preview on Texas and uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State this coming weekend. Will be fantastic in Stillwater. I've been debating if I want to go up there. There's, there's no OU game this weekend. I was like, hmm, I probably may drive to drive to Stillwater. It's only an hour you know hour drive. Let's go let's go watch. Um, this, but Texas has a tough road coming up. They've got two straight road games, Oklahoma State and then Kansas State, so two straight ranked games. And then well, they get a week off and then Kansas State, and then they've got TCU at the crib. And that one to me is going to be the the determining factor of what Texas really is, is if they can get past TCU this year. Because like I said, Sonny Dykes is doing some special stuff there. So you, you got to look at Quinn Ewers. I mean, he threw for 172 yards, three touchdowns, uh, 72 of those yards and two touchdowns went to Xavier Worthy. Uh, one was on that fourth uh, fourth down play right at the end. Another one was a fade in the back of the end zone. Um, uh, throw the fade, baby. This, throw the fade. This is uh, – Bajan still was, was the man. He was still – I mean, I think it was 28 carries for 135 yards. Yeah, so, Bijan was doing this. it all. He was basically it. Yeah, 28, 135. And Quinn, I mean, Quinn three tosses were solid, but yeah, Bijan was basically getting them there. So yeah. I fully expect Texas is going to, if, if Spencer Sanders plays this week, I think that we see Oklahoma State win. I think that when they do it at home, they do it well. They've always had um, Texas's number. Even when Texas was really, really good and Oklahoma State was just that fringe 25 team. Um, they were, uh, they were putting, they were putting whoopings, they were putting offensive whoopings on them. And so, yep. uh, you know, we'll, we'll see, because I think Oklahoma state's, uh, fully healthy. Now they've got all the receivers, which we need to do a show about how Mike Gundy continues to get these guys and they're seven or eight deep on receiver. But, uh, Texas also after the Oklahoma state, they got to go out to Kansas state home against TCU and then their nemesis at Kansas. You tell me that. Jalen Daniels is back it. for that game too, and and so I don't know. I mean, we've had a lot of conversations, but you know, I played baseball at Kansas, and and I just say this is that when people want to get jacked up, it's going to be right at the beginning of college basketball season, so they're going to be used to it, um, and they're going to be able to, to to really go in, and, and that's going to be an atmosphere. And then guess what? Their final reward is you get to come home and play Baylor, who at that point based off what we're seeing now may have throw everything the kitchen sink all of it at texas to end the game in the season with a win yeah exactly so i'm wondering um is texas fans are y'all nervous about this um this kansas game coming up in a few weeks i mean we we did good against them luckily kobe bryant won't be playing unfortunately uh but at the same time if uh jalen daniels is back it may be a battle so with that man that. huh right like, right i feel like i caused that because i said that on the uh, kansas preview make him tackle go at him hit him hard often and when i saw him on the ground i think i texted you and i said oh this is all my fault so uh, yep. Kobe, uh, I hope, was it, this it, not what i meant looking, i didn't mean it uh, that hope, way hope right this right your brain that uh and you know we'll be praying for you kobe we we'll be praying for you, Kobe, man. I want, to, I want you back on Thank the Thank you field. for checking us out here on Unfair Sports on the YouTube channel. Please hit the like, subscribe button before you go. And like I said, share because sharing is caring. And with that, chop it up in a day or two. Peace.